Turning our attention now to the big international story as more victims are pulled from the rubble of a collapsed garment building in Bangladesh. Anger over the disaster is spreading clear across the country. Hundreds of people clash with police again today. They're demanding better safety conditions for workers in the country's massive garment industry. At least 340 people were killed when the poorly built factory came down on Wednesday. But 19 more survivors were found today. Police in Bangladesh have taken five people into custody in connection with the tragedy. Canadian company Loblaw is sending representatives to Bangladesh to get more information. Some of its Joe Fresh line was made at the factory. The disaster has thrust working conditions in Bangladesh into the international spotlight. Charles Kernigan is the executive director of the Institute for Global Labor and Human Rights. He spoke to us about the country's abysmal record for worker safety. Uh, you're talking about working 90 to 100 hours a week. They're working many times 13 and a half hours from 8 o'clock in the morning until 10.30. They work seven days a week. They get two days off a month at most. Wages are pitiful. They get 12 cents an hour for helpers. The junior sewers get maybe 22 cents, and the senior sewers 26 cents at the utmost. Nobody can live on those conditions. The factories are crowded. They're dangerous. They're death traps. There are no fire exits often. Uh, there's no emergency lighting. Um, this is just a disaster waiting to happen. And that's why you had the Tazreen fire, where 112 workers were killed in November of 2012. That's why in January, the smart fashion factory, seven young kids were killed in a factory uh, with another fire. And now you have this uh, horrific accident uh, at, at uh, Rana Plaza, where there's 355 people are now dead, and there's seven to 800 workers still in the rubble. So it's, the, death squad, the death toll is going to go sky high. And this will be the worst industrial manufacturing uh, accident in, in the history of the world. Even a small group like ours, if we go to these factories at 1 o'clock in the morning and we can see the lights on and there are no factories working, if we go with the workers back to the homes and they bring the labels and they tell us how many hours they worked and the miserable conditions they live in. I mean, they live in hovels you wouldn't even put an animal in. And there's no clean drinking water. They don't have sufficient food. They live from hand to mouth. The only reason they went back into that uh, Rana Plaza was because they needed the money. And the owner said to them, if you do not go back in on Wednesday, after everybody saw the cracks in the building, they said to them, you won't get paid for the month of April. And no, no worker can exist a, a full month without wages because they live from hand to mouth. I think that the labels uh, are fairly naive. Uh, we know that the European labels have tremendous uh, recognition for worker rights. But I can tell you honestly, I have never, ever seen any of those uh, you know, laws implemented. It's never happened. Uh, but they do. But Europe does have the best codes of conduct. They have some of the junkiest factories. Uh, the same thing with Canada, same thing with the United States. 